welcome back to another Blender tutorial video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a spark animation in Blender 2.8. Lots of videos have been made about this, but not in the newer versions such as Blender 2.8 and Blender 2.81. I've seen Andrew Price do a video on it, but it's really, really old, like Blender 2.65 or something. So as always, let's just get straight into it. So what you want to do first is, first of all, delete the default cube by pressing X and deleting it. Shift A, but then you go over to Mesh, Cylinder, and you spawn that in. Once you've done that, you do RX90 to rotate it in 90 degrees on the X axis, and then RZ90 to rotate it once again. And then, you, well, then what you want to do is press Tab, go into Edit Mode, go to Faces, chop off both these ends by pressing by selecting them with Shift, press X, delete Faces. Next, you want to press tab again, uh, sorry, press A to select all, S, X to scale it down like this, like a thin, thin O-ring type of shape. Then you, what you want to do is press tab once again, click B for border select. You want to cut it like to three-fourths of it is what we want roughly. Press X when you select all those. Tab. Bring it down on the Z axis a little. And bring it over. So this is going to be our, our major object. Next what we, want, what we want to do is press Shift A. Put in a icosphere. This will be our object that's getting emitted out. Click on this again, and go to the physics tab, or not the physics tab, the particle emission tab. Go to number, make it 20,000. Go down over here, lifetime, make okay, it 15. And life randomness to a 0.8. So next, next we want to go to render, set as object. Instant, not instance object, and select the icosphere. So all our particles, if you click play here, will be icospheres. Now you, what you want to do next is go to the velocity tab, set, and set the normal to 10, so you get a shooting out sparks. Look at that, looks pretty dang, dang nice. So what you want to do next after that is go to the randomize and set this to a randomization of three. So you get smaller and larger particles. And these particles are looking a bit big, so you want you might want to scale down the icosphere just a bit. Maybe you want the particles just to be a little finer. That seems to be about right. So let's do control alt zero to snap the camera into place. Snap it like right here. Click on the camera. Set this to 35 millimeters to give it a wider angle of view. Next, what you want to do is go into slide this tab out over here. Go into the shader editor, and it will be texturing the sparks now. So you want to click on the icosphere. Go to Materials, press New, delete the principal dot BD, BDSF, and you want to go to Particle Info, put in a Divide Node, I mean not a Divide Node, Mass Node first, and then set that to Divide. Then what you want to do next is connect the age to the value and the lifetime to the value. Press Shift A, insert in a color ramp, connect the color ramp to the value up here. Press Shift A again, put in a mix shader so we can mix all this in at the end once we're finished. Put in an emission shader to give it a glow. And then finally put in a transparent dot 
transparent BDSF node. And then you just want to hook these up. Get the color to the color. And the BDS BDSF to the shader. Need to reorganize this just a little because this can get messy. Then what you want to do is take the value of the divide node, the math node, and put it into the mix shader, and take the emission and put it into the shader over here. And if you want different color sparks, regular than traditional sparks, you can just change up the colors on the color ramp. But for now, I'm just going to use, oops, I'm just going to use a typical regular sparks color, going from red hot white to a nice like orangish color once they're dying out. I think this may probably be a little bit of yellow. That seems to be fine now. There we go. Maybe even darken this a little bit. And plug in the shader to the surface. And that's our nodes done. Let's see. Then what you want to do next is close this out. Go into the camera, press play, and go into render mode. As you can see, this looks a little unrealistic. That's because we're in the EV render engine. So you want to switch over to cycles. If you have a compatible GPU, set that to GPU compute. Turn down light pass for fast renders, simplify, and press C and go to render it again. As you can see, this looks a little more realistic now. What we do next, it, what we want to do next is go over to color, bring this down to black, go to render again. This is looking quite good now, as you can see. We're getting red hot sparks at the beginning, and they're fading out slowly to like a reddish glow at the end. So after we've done that, wait, what, what you want to do next is go over here to the physics tab, to the particle tab again, scroll down until you see extra on objects, not extra, sorry, if I can find it, oh, scale randomness, and turn this up to a 5, now as you can see, all the particles are very, very random in scale, which is giving it a more realistic type of spark, look, there, because you can see there are tiny, tiny, tiny little sparks, and then much larger ones next to them, so you press Z, go into renders, you can see that there are many different shapes and sizes of sparks everywhere now. If you go back to solid, and go to... A little tip I want to show you guys is, if you go to... I don't know if it's children, I forget where it is down here. If you report display, you can turn down the amount that it actually rendered so your computer can play slowly. But as you can see, the display percentage makes it inaccurate without it you baking it. And while you're here, you want to tick off show emitter because and that will what that'll do is I'll take off the emitter that's there, so you can place this sparks, uh, this flurry of sparks anywhere you want, maybe on a welding machine or maybe a grinder and any of your animations. But I'll just keep it on now for now. You can turn it off if you want. And if you go into your little camera, you can press Z to make sure everything's nice. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the scene. And everything seems to be going well. So what you want to do next, if you're running on Blender 2.81, you want to go into the compositing area and set up the denoise node. If you don't know how to do that, I'll link my tutorial for tips and tricks on how to Render faster with Blender down below. That shows you how to set up the denoise node. And after this, you want to go over here and set up all this. Of course, you know PNG, FFmpeg video, encoding, MPEG 4, medium quality, high quality, good to real time. And change your output over here and then just name your file. After that, you want to go over here, set your sample rate, go up here, and render animation. And now you can just apply this animation or of sparks to any other uh, object that you have, and you can use it. I, my opinion is this is very versatile. And if, if you want to import this to any of your .blend files, you can go up here to File, 
go down to append and what that's going to do is that you can import other files or other blender file other blend dot blend files into this file so you can use maybe a, a model grinder like I said and just put it down here it'll shoot out sparks everywhere one more thing before you render your actual animation you want to go to the physics tab scroll down click on cache and bake the animation and what this will do is that your CPU will calculate all the physics for the particle effects that we put in and it will store it on your computer so it will use it and, it, and it'll play a lot smoother if you bake the actual animation so if you like the so if you like the video hit that like button if you dislike the video hit that dislike button if you like my videos in general don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button I'll see you guys later. Bye.